another episode of iwe marketplace chit chat where we give the opportunity for entrepreneurs to talk about themselves and what they do so we can learn from them and also support them right, right now i'm with one of the best mc in the u.s so far <laughs> i've been opportune to see him a couple of times thanks for joining us mc jean baptiste Thank you, my brother, Mr. Ivan. You're welcome. How's it going out there in Minnesota? Oh, man, Minnesota feels like summer. We don't have winter no more, so it's warm out there, nice, pretty warm. Oh, that's beautiful. So uh, I know there are people now watching us that may not have known you. Mm -hmm. Can you please introduce yourself? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, FC Jean-Baptiste. That's, uh, that's how they call me. I'm from Cameroon, uh, West Africa, precisely from Bamenda, Bamenda boy. So I work as an IT specialist and I follow my dreams as a, a master of ceremony, which I've been doing that for so many years now. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that you're following your passion as an <laughs> MC. Yes, my brother, yes. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. So when, when did you realize, like, you know, MC is something that you, you want to pursue? Oh, yeah, I think I've been working as, I've been emceeing events for over 20 years now, but I started emceeing when I was like uh, seven years old. Yeah, that's what I remember. As far back as seven years old when I did a birthday for my one of my cousins. So that's when I started actually as an MC. But... I know some people tried to take me right back when I was like three years old, but no, no, it's seven. <laughs> seven years old, man. That, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were too young. What can you even remember? Do you still remember things that happened I mean, oh. during the party? Trust me, trust me, trust me. Uh, my, my memory is very, very wonderful when it comes to that. Remember so back us, in the days, seven years the days old. of um, Mewe and uh, we used to dance Mewe and uh, Bam Bam Be. You know all the songs? And then, yeah. Uh, yeah, we used to. I used to get my ruler or my pen, and I would go out there and try to tell people what to do. It's time for us to dance. It's time for us to stage, and we have to eat rice, Gavin biscuit, you know, cornflakes, and um, Foster Clark. So <laughs> I remember all those days when I used well, to organize people. Yeah, that's beautiful. That you know, seven years old Jean Baptiste, you're already uh, mm -hmm. thinking about a career. You know. So what, when did you realize, like, this MC thing is something that you want to take serious? Uh, I think 2019, because I moved to the States 2009. So yeah. I was fortunate when I got here, my brother in Maryland, um, Mr. Allen, Allen Rush, I was invited to do my first event in Maryland, that was 2010. Then I stayed on to 2019, when I went back and I picked up the mic, thanks to DJ Kaka. I started dressing up again, putting on suits. So that was a perfect time for me to go back and start MC. So from 2019, I've been doing commercialized MC. Wow, that's beautiful. So what do you like most about, you know, being an MC? Uh, I studied philosophy back in school. So I've, I see more in giving back to mankind and humanity. So I always want to serve people. To be to serve people are not to be served, you know. So I like to give back, and the way you can give back is try to organize stuff. So when I organize events, the host is a person who brought me or hired me for that event. I try as much as possible to make sure that the guests or the audience are satisfied following their programs because that's what an MC should do: follow through with the program of the day, accomplish that so that you can actually please whoever is bringing you there. So it's all about my service. Wow. So, like, uh, this year, have you had any MC, MC in Geek already? Man, 2023 was hectic. So, 24 now. I have an event tonight. First in America. I'm doing one tonight. Uh, but I had an event in uh, Cote d'Ivoire on the 1st of January. Wow. Yeah, I was in Aya. I think if I came back, I was in Cameroon. I left Cameroon on the 20th. So, I might have done something, but I don't, I don't really want to call it MC. So, the mm -hmm. first day I'm dressing up again in the U.S. is going to be tonight where I'm hosting a baby shower. In wow, that, that's beautiful. And how you. did you get the uh, contract to MC that event? Uh, just like I'm doing right now. Your your platform is very is very wonderful. So 
Mm-hmm. You, you, I've been working with you now for I think like almost two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I'm not really big when it comes to Instagram, but as of now, I do a lot of publicity with my business on your platform and my WhatsApp, some Facebook, and TikTok. So folks see my videos, but I do a lot more of relational uh, uh, connect, connect, connectivity with folks. So I talk to folks, and when they see the job that I do, they actually pass over the message. So I actually get hired. That's beautiful. Thank you. When when you uh, get like a gig like this, right? What information do you usually need from the host in order to start the planning? Well, you fail to 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 prepare, you're gonna fail. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of preparations. I have so many templates that I use for my events. Mm-hmm. So I first of all send the templates to whoever is hiring me. If you go through my template and you want to switch any of the programs or something that you don't like. We can always, always twist it. So I actually keep in collaboration with my um, with, with the host of the event. So we can meet like uh, once a week, talk about the events, maybe virtually or physically. Then we can actually put stuff down. So I have a lot of templates that I use, and I also go with a program. So we can come with a good program, which is going to be used to run the events of the day. Wow. What have you uh, learned so far, you know, from being an MC? What are some of the things that you've learned that you want to share with us? You don't learn, you don't learn about being, you don't learn from being an MC. It's like you're asking your MC, what has he learned being a soccer player? He has <laughs> learned more about staying, uh, staying a professional, keeping shape, but mm-hmm. to be professional, that's a skill. So my MC is, uh, I think it's a gift from God. So I have the skill set, which is uh, what has been keeping me going. Mm-hmm. Things that I've learned, I've learned things which are not uh, uh, MC like. Like people are different, so people will not like you for the things that you do, the mm-hmm. things that you say. But at the end of the day, being an MC is something which is innate. It comes from within. So mm-hmm. for all the years that I've been working as an MC, I have not actually learned anything to add to my skills. But I've learned that to deal with people, they have different mannerisms and attributes. So try as much as possible to put everyone together and satisfy the host of the day and your audience nice so what what are you mentioned skills what are some of that those the skill set that are you, you it's helping you to to succeed or your diction diction is something which is very powerful your language should be uh, i hosted i host in mainly english uh mm-hmm. pidgin and some french uh not not um hindering the fact that i can say some few words in spanish one or two in spanish one or two in, uh, in Lingala, one or two in uh, Swahili. So once you have this, um, uh, this skill set where you can actually talk to people, to your audience, so they can understand you, being from very, very low English to this high Palatin English, it is a wonderful thing. So I think language is one of them, which counts very much. And secondly, is also time management. Know when to talk and when not to talk. And lastly, there is this uh, skill that I have, which is a little bit of singing. I will sing once in a while, which is wonderful too. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I didn't know you can sing, man. Oh man, uh, I do a lot of a uh, little bit of atalaku, and I can also sing some songs that are good. I don't want me, don't want me to sing like Craig David. No, I will sing like Jean Baptiste. <laughs> so, so, like, like, which kind of song do you sing? Dwala song or? No, that that's deep singing. Oof, that's so much singing for me. I will do something like um. Uh, if you take me back to old school, all this Westlife and a little bit of Coupe uh, de Cali, and I don't do a lot of Makosa, <laughs> that's hard for me. So I could sing my some some few, but many traditional songs, you know. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll chew what's here and there, but it's singing. <laughs> that's beautiful. So uh, apart from uh, aside from uh, MC, you mentioned uh, you you are uh, you you're in the IT. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. We, we want to go personal now and learn some few things about you. Thank you so much. I've been an IT professional for plus 10 years now, an Oracle database administrator. So I am a software engineer. That's what I do. That is my career. But MC is my passion. So Monday through Fridays, I work. Uh, I don't know if it's thanks to COVID or whatever. At least I'm fortunate to work from home. I work for... Uh, the state of Minnesota, Department of Transportation. That's what I do for a living, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. And one thing I like about uh, your personality is that you're very engaged 
uh, in the community. I remember I saw you uh, in Atlanta during the yeah. National Veteran Tournament. Yeah. Did you uh, handle some of the games? I know you do refrain and different yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, I did, we I think in Delaware was it Delaware one of those tournaments or Maryland where mm -hmm. I came so close to managing a game, but I'm part of the the organizing committee, so I am a super delegate, which mm -hmm. means uh, we have to delegate the games. So I've been working now with the NBT, giving back to my community for over I'll say I've been to five of those tournaments. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I give it back to the community is what makes us strong. So I love giving back to my community. I'm a soccer referee. I haven't refed any games there, but um, I should be getting back um, to getting some games in this summer in Minnesota. Nice. So what's the process of uh, working with you? The process of working with me is transparency, which is something that most folks really don't have. So when you're transparent, we can actually get things going. I'm not a saint. I'm liable to mistakes. But uh, if we put things together and we work as one, we should achieve greatness. That's my that's my model superiority. I just feel like people should actually be transparent to one another, and then um, let them know how you feel. Then, mm -hmm. like if I take a contract and I realize that I don't even call them contracts, I call them geeks, and I don't have any contracts that are signed with anyone because I want to believe that we're transparent to one another. If you give your fifty percent, I bring my fifty percent, or I take a hundred percent. Nice. So uh, we, I know we're from Cameroon, and you know when you're emceeing parties, you do you get do people come to you to tell you to you know request music from the DJ, like what the DJ should play and and different stuff like that? Yes, folks will always do that because as every day we have at least two two thousand new songs released every day on Earth, mm -hmm. so you can believe that you as a DJ, mm -hmm. you can have two thousand downloads every day, you know. You need a wonderful hard drive to carry that a terabyte, you know. Mm -hmm. So I always uh, I get folks come to me and tell me, man, your DJ, we need to understand your DJ. Can you play something different? All those kind of things. <laughs> so I always mm -hmm. tell them that just go bring your song and be nice to the DJ. Show the DJ the song on the phone, and he might play your song, you know. Mm -hmm. Because no one is no one is ever wrong. You give folks drinks, the drink, I mean, they are a little bit high. They want to dance to a particular tune. So what do you do? You have to calm them down. You don't send anyone packing. You just talk to them nicely and connect with the DJ. Then from there, you should, you should actually have a wonderful dancing party. So as an MC, you do you liaise with all the rest of the vendors or you you work, uh, you work isolate yourself from them? How, how does it work? Man does not live by bed alone. A man can only live on an island. Mm -hmm. So the, for you to succeed, you need to, you need to work with other people. I... We happen to come from a community where we don't have so many wedding planners. So these days, uh, you have folks who are doing decor, folks that are doing um, uh, catering, the DJ. I have most of their numbers in my environment. And if I'm going out of state to host an event, all I need to do is create a WhatsApp group and put all of the vendors in there so we can actually communicate. Communication breeds success. So that is what I do. I try to communicate with the DJs, uh, whoever, if I have another MC I'm hosting with, I have to make sure we are talking. So I'm not meeting you for the first time that we have mixed feelings and we met someone's event. No, we have to be talking and working towards success. So what, what are so, what, can you give me like a challenge you faced as an MC? Uh, the girls. The girls keep coming. <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not really, not really. Uh, when it comes to challenges, challenges are like, I think you brought it up earlier where we are running through with a program and a family member walks up to you and tell you, please, I would like to make a speech at this time. Man, you're not in the program <laughs> or you're not on my paper. So how do I just bring you and give you the mic to say something when the bride and groom do not ask you to talk? So I face that and some of them will be mad at me. They will not talk to me. Some will even insult me in my face. And they will <laughs> so I've, I've been through, that's one of my greatest challenges that I face. Apart from that, Every other thing is human nature. So how do you handle uh, moments like that? Mm, uh, mankind. Mankind, for you to be successful, you have to build a world around you. So you make people come closer to you. There are times that I, I, I did this event one time, and this lady really wanted to talk. And I walked up to her and said, please, you can't talk. And I know we're in Cameroon. I just came from the US. Take, this is $20, OK? Don't say anything. Just hold this money, and we'll talk after. 
she became the happiest person that night. <laughs> the most happy person that I she was so happy. So those little tricks can work sometimes. Oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> do you have like a, a quote or a mantra that you say to yourself, you know, during difficult times? My mom taught me one thing. I don't have a quote. My mom just taught me Psalms 91. So uh, Psalms 91 and also Lord Jesus, please help me. Yeah, so that's 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 all. I just do my Psalms 91 and also I will say, yeah, Lord Yeshua, please help me. I think that's about it. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, there's so many young people out there that are looking to, you know, become an MC or maybe they're just starting. What advice do you have for, for them? Uh, just like just like the IT career, which I have right now, I tell folks who want to do IT or AWS, or Oracle, Scrum Masters, I tell them, if you go into IT business, as um, uh, as you want to make money, you're not going to succeed in what you're doing. When you go in there as a career, you will succeed because in a career, you learn every single day. So, so many MCs are going into because they like to dress and look good. And MC now is becoming like a showman. People want to just go show about your wearing and stuff like that. So they will pick up the mic just because they see others doing it. You need to have a gift. You have a gift and you have a passion for the microphone. You will be successful in what you do. But if you just go in there because you like the money and you want to become famous, then you might as well just go learn how to play soccer at the age of 45. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, also, uh, we, we are from Cameroon, and there's a uh, <laughs> lot of uh, vibes going on mm -hmm. about uh, 80-20. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you explain what that 80-20 is and what's your opinion as uh uh, as regard to that, you know, and also how can artists, you know, work with uh, managers, you know? Yeah, you're going to get me in trouble, but I'm, I'm going to say it. You know, uh, Cameroonian, uh, Cameroonian journalism, I didn't do journalism, but I just learned of recent that uh, Cameroonian uh, journalism law says that when well, you're a journalist on any radio, television uh, network, you have to play at least 60% of Cameroonian music, then 40% of foreign music. Fortunate enough, I was in Cote d'Ivoire, where I just came back. I was there from January, like, uh, December through January. I walked through the streets of Cote d'Ivoire, and you will get just Zuglu and Kupede A little bit of Niger here and there. The event I was hosting, I told the DJ, please, can you play PTP and Grace Deka? He was like, um, je n'ai pas ça ici. I was like, I was, I was mad at myself. Like, the most famous artist in my country, you don't even have their song, and you are, you are hosting a Cameroonian wedding. You know, so I felt bad about it, and I just want to. I can talk about this forever, but I managed some um, some artists that I've managed before, and I'm still managing some right now. We need to love ourselves. We need to love our own. Cameroon is a country where you go to a nightclub and they play 80% of foreign songs and 20% of Cameroonian songs. Like you even walk into a Cameroonian artist, you don't even know them. They don't make money out of music. We don't show them love. Why? Because we are the highest consumers of Nigerian products or produce which is not something which I'm against it, but we should as well say charity begins at home. Let us love our own, listen to our own, then we can actually get in foreign music into our culture, which is good. Diversity is fine, but right now we are losing our own identity. We go to a Cameroonian wedding from the introduction of the song to the last song are all Niger songs. What happened to us? That's just my problem. That's a good one. I I pray uh, we support each other. It's not only in music, you know, in, in business as well. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, I think there's starting to be a lot of uh, support within uh, and collaboration amongst mm -hmm. uh, Cameroonians and, and Africans, you know. But what else do you have to say? You know, is there something you would like to say? That your time fun? your time stamp is your time stamp is very short, man. I wish this could go forever. I was just going to tell you that before I went to University of Yaoundé 2 where I did movie making. So I was one of the first persons to produce a movie for Yaoundé 2 University. And this movie, wow. when we did the movie, it didn't even, it was not even published. The second movie, when we did the second movie, a Nigerian producer came and bought that movie. It has never been published anywhere. What does that tell you? It tells you that we are working in a country where we want to succeed. But you cannot succeed if we don't have Cameroonian sponsors and producers. Please, fellow Cameroonians or fellow Africans, let us like our own, support our own, produce ourselves, buy our products, 
so that we can also build our own community. Thank you. Good, good, good. And, you know, there are so many events that are coming up. This is just uh, the beginning of the year. People are starting to book for their <laughs> vendors uh, in 2024. Yes. Do you, uh, can you, this is an opportunity for you to sell your service. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a busy, very, very busy year. One of my um, most admired um, MCs, I have actual Gustav, who is my uncle, and I have also um, uh, Bendrix. Bendrix showed me his calendar, and I saw it. There was no space the year 2024. That was sometime in, in August when he showed me that. As I'm talking to you right now, I think I have just like four or five more days left of the month of the year of 2024. So I'm actually super, super booked. Please, I'm in Minnesota. I fly all over the world, no restrictions. I've been to Dubai, I've been to Ivory Coast, I've been to other places in Europe. Please book me for your events. My name is MC Jean Baptiste. Check me on all social media platforms and I will be right there at your service. My phone number should be right there on the screen and I will treat your event as if it is mine. Money is not a problem. <laughs> that is a good one. And this has been a wonderful teacher or conversation. Please, if you're watching, help us share this video. Make sure you download iWing Marketplace app. It's a fabulous app. We have the new version of the app out now. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us share this video. Thank you for joining us again, Jean-Baptiste, and keep doing what you're doing. Just before you, before you end the live, I just want to tell everyone, if you don't have your business on iWing Marketplace, please, you're making a mistake. This brother right here has a vision for Africans and Cameroonians and the world at large. Please put your products, put your produce in his shop, online shop, and you will be able to buy from anywhere in the world. He's a wonderful man. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much, and I appreciate the shout out. We'll come again some other time, hopefully. Keep doing what you're doing, and we're out. Thank you, listeners and watchers. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.